Hey guys, I'm having a little bit of problems with uh, critters right now. I got a coon, pretty sure it's a coon, that's gotten into my little charentus, which is a little personal sized cantaloupes. And I got a groundhog down in the lower garden down there eating the sweet potatoes and also uh, pulling the rest of the corn off the stalk. The corn, not a problem. I'm pretty much done picking anyway, help themselves. The sweet potatoes, I don't particularly care for them grazing down there. And the coon up here messing with these melons, I sure ain't crazy about that. One of the disadvantages to these live traps right here is you can't control what goes inside. So not too long ago, I come out one morning after I had it set and there was a gray cat in here. Now we have two gray cats that are just as tame and docile as any animals you'll ever be around. And when I saw this, there was a cat all the way back in the back end of this cage hair all over the place and I had to look real close to make sure that that was my cat. I didn't even recognize the cat. He looked like something out of a back alley somewhere. Just mean looking little cat. Open the door, let him come on out and he sure was happy. But that's what happens when you set these live traps. Sometimes you get your pets. Now to combat the coons, uh, you can set these uh, cuff traps. Once he puts his hand down in there, it clamps and he's gone. Well, he's not getting away. And the bad thing about them though, the only one way to get that coon out of this trap, you got to shoot him first. So I'm trying to have a heart. Goes right along with this have a heart trap right here. Y'all know I got a fair amount of uh, really hot peppers around here right now. So I think I can go ahead and uh, spare a few of those, put them in the blender, mix up me a little concoction and spray on some of this stuff. I think I can deter those coons and the groundhog. If I go down there and spray them sweet potatoes with some uh, habanero pepper spray, I don't think the groundhog gonna eat them anymore. If he is, he's a bad boy. Right here is where the coon been eating these uh, charentas. I got one of these a few days ago, and man, that's a good taste of melon. But as soon as they get just about ripe, the old coon come along here, and he just tear that thing wide open. They get it opened up real good, just take them claws, reach up inside of it. They got hands almost like people do, and just uh, clean that thing right out. This is what I'm going to do to solve this problem with the coons and the groundhogs. Got me some red habaneros right here. I'm going to uh, we'll drop three of them in there real quick. Gonna add just a little bit of water to it. Whew. <coughs> and uh, as Donald would say, if three is good, how about six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Actually, eleven. Did y'all catch that? That's a Trinidad scorpion right there. Remember, I said there were some similarities between this and the red habanero. How easy they are to get them mixed up. That's the scorpion. So we're going to put 11 habaneros and one scorpion in this thing. That ought to do the trick. Woo! Something else I want to put in there is this garlic. Put that in there. Add a little bit more water. Looks like I'm about to make a mess here. I hate to take the lid off this stuff. It's going to be hot too. Whew, good gracious of life. What I'm going to do is put a paint strainer down in this thing. Put it right here. And I'm going to try very carefully to put this uh, inferno liquid into the sprayer. I had to mash it down in there. Got a small hole up top. <laughs> I feel sorry for the coons in the groundhog. They get a whiff of this, get some of this on the nose. They're gonna have a bad night. Hmm. Then what I'm gonna do is just take the hose and spray down through there. Try to get as much of that stuff as I can into the uh, sprayer. Now I could let this stay in here for you know several hours. That might help get some more of the heat out of it. But 
I don't think I'm gonna need no more heat. I'm gonna mash all the juice out of here real good. And no, I don't have no gloves on. But I will be washing my hands very soon. So I got sweat running in my eyes and I think I'm gonna need to wipe them shortly. All right, it's gonna be a mess to clean up. You don't ever do nothing like this inside the house. That'll just be terrible. So I got the peppers and garlic in there and I just need something to help it stick to the leaves. And give a little bit of this Dawn dishwashing liquid right here. That'll do the trick. Finish filling it up now. Put my handle back on there. Make like that commercial, we want to pump you up. Pump this thing up. And we are ready to do battle. Get this thing shook up real good. And then I'm not too much worried about trying to spray the whole plant. The only thing I want to do Spray right around here, right around where the melons are. And tell her, come get some. I think this will do the trick right here. Come by, stick his little nose in some of this hot pepper spray. I believe he'll go on and find another tree somewhere. I'm going to spray a little bit more stuff over there, the rest of those charentas. I got some watermelons and cantaloupes across the road. Then I'm going to go down there where the sweet potatoes are. And the outside road that I couldn't figure out why it was so much smaller than the rest of it, that's the one that this groundhog has been grazing on. As you can see, I have caught the mask bandit. It took me two nights. The first night I set this old trap, put my marshmallows up in there, and uh, something got the marshmallows out and didn't spring the trap. So last night I loosened it up some more put some more marshmallows in there and didn't take me long to get this little critter right here. So as you can see, if you're new to gardening or thinking about gardening or you're just getting started and stuff like that, uh, in addition to learning what seeds and what to plant, when to put them in the ground, what fertilizer to use, uh, how much to water it, how to keep the bugs off of it, you also got to deal with these critters like this. Raccoons and groundhogs are deadly on a garden. They will tear your stuff all to pieces. And it's not fair uh, for you to go out there and do a whole lot of work trying to raise the crop and about the time that corn starts to come in, you go out there and the whole row is just laying on the ground where they have reached up there and ripped all the ears off, chewed down one side of it, went on to the next ear. They will do it. Same thing with your cantaloupes and watermelons, tear them all to pieces. Folks that got deer in the garden, you got to do something. Spraying that pepper spray, I think, really helps to deter uh, animals, especially the ones who like to eat the foliage, they ain't gonna come out and eat that stuff when you got some uh, habanero or whatever uh, hot pepper you have sprayed on that thing, they're not gonna eat it. But if you're growing a garden to feed your family and feed other people around you or planning on doing so, you need to figure out what's in the woods around you, learn those animals, learn how to catch them and learn how to get rid of them. Whether you're gonna catch them and eat them or catch them like I am and take it to the horse farm, let the guy turn it loose in the swamp down behind his house. Whichever way you so desire, you're gonna to need to be able to get control of that property. You can't just plant a garden out there in the woods and then let the animals come in and make like a buffet at uh, Golden Corral. That don't work. There's gonna be a lot of disappointment going on there. So especially in the springtime when you're getting that garden planted, uh, you need to be observant and being aware of what kind of tracks are around that garden, what kind of animals come there. So you can go ahead and set some of these traps, whatever kind of trapping method you so desire to catch the critters before it comes time to eat. That'll definitely be a smart move on your part to get the critters out of there before your crops come in. So y'all take care and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. You ready to go for a ride, little buddy? Huh? You ready to go for a ride?